All right, for the final part of this, we are going to go over um, how to align two proteins to each other to compare their structures. So you should feel comfortable using Chimera. You should feel comfortable using uh, BioPython in order to start to um, analyze proteins and find their positions. And what we also want to be able to do is compare two proteins. So um, you should be able to like compare how far apart to a ligand is to a given amino acid um, based upon what you know. But let's say you wanted to compare two different structures together. Um, so we talked before about how you can um, solve protein crystals for proteins when they're either bound or not bound to a ligand. And um, as a as as a you know protein biologist, you want to know what changes about the conformation of the protein. So how does binding that ligand actually change the shape of the protein? Because that will give you some sort of clue into the mechanism by which it activates. And so, if you have two different structures, the problem is is that you need to align these proteins together so that you can compare them. So just as a silly example. Um, what I have done is I have gone ahead and taken the glutamate gated ion channel and I have deleted uh, some of the chains. So now we just have two of the chains. So there's two different PDB files, one that just contains the A chain and then one that just contains the, the uh, B chain. So you should be able to download that if you want. Um, and you know you can see that these subunits are very similar to each other in shape. And um, you might want to align these together so that you really can compare that. And so in Chimera, you can do that using this tool called matchmaker so if you go to structure analysis and then you click on matchmaker it'll it'll open up this new screen right here and so you can choose which strain you want to be the reference strain and then you can choose which strain you want to be the uh, moving strain so which strain do you actually want to to move so that it aligns together and so I've chosen chain A as my reference strain and then I've in this box right here I've chosen chain B as the strain the chain that I want to move and so then I can just simply hit OK and so what you've seen is that it has aligned these and moved these so they're basically completely um, next to each other um, so there's some minor differences so for example uh, you know this chain B uh, has uh, this molecule, this ligand molecule that's not present in chain A, so you don't see a tan version of this. Uh, but in general, you've lined these up pretty, pretty, pretty much. And so this kind of shows you, shows you how identical the tetrameric shapes are um, between all of these different subunits. So you can always do this in Chimera, um, but potentially you also want to be able to do this at the command line um, in Python if you have a large number of proteins, for example, that you want to do. And so we can do this in BioPython, but I warn you now that it's actually a little bit difficult to do, and you kind of have to understand the whole process of how this works in order to do that. So the way it works is that and if you think about it just a little bit, it, it, it should make sense, is that you are trying to get these proteins as close together as possible. But in order to do that, you need to know which atoms should be next to each other. And so you need to know atom in chain A, which atom, if, if there's you know atom number one, what, sh what is the equivalent atom in number B? And so, you have to get the sequence and the idea behind this approach is that you get the sequence and then you need to align the sequence of the two proteins. So this right here shows you an example of a protein alignment. And so 
you know, amino acids can be identical to each other. So they both start with a methionine, they both have a serine, um, but they don't have to be identical. So, you know, these next three amino acids are different in this protein than this protein. But this allows us to create a correspondence to say, okay, I want this protein, this amino acid right here to be as close as possible to this amino acid, and then so on and so forth. And <coughs> this can also handle things like gaps. So in this case, there isn't an amino acid that is equivalent to this one right here. That's what that dash means here. And so we don't even care about this valine. We're not going to try to try to compare it to anything to the other protein. So so when we do this in BioPython, what we're going to do is first we're going to get the sequence of the chains, and then we are going to make an alignment. And then using this alignment, we're going to build a list of atoms that are comparable to each other. And then we're going to take advantage of this protein down here that allows us to um, minimize the distance between the atoms. So it kind of takes one of the, the, the structures, it translates it, it rotates it, and moves it around, and it has some sort of scoring system until they're close as po together as possible. So let us do this now. So we are going to start Python. And we are going to import BioPDB. And we are going to read in those two structures that I have created. So now we have two different structures. One of them holds chain A, and one of them holds chain B. Um, and in order to get the sequence of this, the amino acid sequence, we need to use this class called uh, PPB, PP Builders, Polypeptide Builder. And so this is able to take as input a structure and uh, outputs the amino acid sequence. So um, a list of amino acid sequences. And so, uh, oops. And so now we have this sequence object. So this is a custom sequence object um, that this, the, the sequence is actually stored in. And so then we do the same thing for the second. And so now we have the sequence um, of both of these structures. So this is the first part. And so now we need to build an alignment between these two sequences. So this is a protein alignment that tells us which amino acids are equivalent in the two structures. And so for this, we are going to take advantage of a, another function. So this is in BioPython. So this is not in the PDB. This is just in, in, in BioPython. Um, but it's a function called pairwise. And what pairwise does, it allows you to align two objects together. And so in order to do that, um, you have to specify a substitution matrix. <coughs> and unfortunately, the comma got converted. And what this is, is a way to compare how similar two amino acids are together. So this is just based upon um, uh, you know, lots of work in sequence alignment and phylogenies. And the idea behind it is that some amino acids are somewhat equivalent to each other. So hydrophobic amino acids like leucine and valine, those are similar. And so if you substitute a valine to a leucine, that's not a big deal. But if you make a substitution from, let's say, a, um, a cysteine to a glutamate, then that is like a big deal and it's very difficult for the protein to handle. So this, this matrix you know, tells you, you, know, you can look at, okay, if I go from a uh, histamine in the H to a, so if the histamines are the same, I get positive eight points. 
Um, but if the histamine gets turned into an alanine, then I lose two points. So it's just a way to treat all substitutions unequally, um, but the idea is pretty straightforward. So when you do alignment, you just try to maximize the score to make it large as possible. So there's different types of matrices that you can use. So blow sum 62 is just one of them. And um, there's kind of different reasons that you would use them depending on how one, you know, one of the big considerations is how distantly related the two proteins are. Um, but kind of the extent of this is beyond the scope of the class. Um, so all you need to know is that you need to be able to specify which one to use. And so that's what these, this line right here did. So we imported a bunch of substitution matrices and then we specified um, we wanted to use Blosome 62. Um, if you want to see all the ones that are available, uh, you can simply run this function without specifying a name. And then you can see these are some of the other ones that are available. So there's different versions of the Blosome. There's Benner, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the other thing that you need to do in order to do an alignment is you have to specify the um, penalties for having gaps. So gaps um, are when you have a dash. So basically we've, we've opened a gap in the protein. And so um, there is the original gap opening penalty and then there's the gap extension penalty. So um, I just use these values negative 10 and negative 0.5. So now we will save the sequence of those two polypeptides. And now we are ready to do the pairwise alignment. So the pairwise alignments, um, so this function, uh, you use the dot operator to get to align. So we want to align it. And then global DS is just the, the exact type of alignment al algorithm that we're going to use. So we give it the first sequence, the second sequence, we give it the matrix we want to use, the opening gap penalty, and the extension gap penalty. And so it takes a little bit of time. Alignments um, can, can, take, can be a little bit slow, so don't worry if it doesn't return right away. Um, and then once you're done, it gives you the alignment. Um, so this alignment is kind of trivial because these are identical subunits. Basically, the, the you know there the there are no gaps, and the, the two sequences are are identical. But in the homework, you'll actually have proteins that are different from each other. So we get the score. So the score seventeen eighty eight. That's you know that's a really high score. Um, and then we kind of get the start and the end of the alignment. So in some cases. Um, you can return multiple alignments. Um, so sometimes there are a lot of alignments that are kind of similar in score, and so it'll return more than one alignment. In this case, it only returned a single alignment. And so we're gonna store that as this new variable called top alignment, okay? Um, so now we know how to compare the two structures because we know the first amino acid in the first object com is compared to the amino acid in this object. So this is the alignment that allows us to compare the residues together. So next, now we just kind of have to uh, massage the, the types of objects to be compatible with what is expected by the structure alignment class. Um, so we are uh, importing this class called multiple sequence alignment and then we are creating a multiple sequence alignment out of my out of those two alignment objects. Um, whoop, sorry, and I forgot I need to convert this to a seek record. So this is probably a little bit confusing, um, but it is just because um, we require certain class objects. All right, so now we have our multiple seek alignment object. And so now we can
Okay, so now what this has provided us is it has created this duos list and this duos list is a list of tuples that tell us the uh, residue in the first chain that should be the same as the residue for the second chain. And so now we are getting close to the point where we can actually align these. And so um, in order to do that, uh, we have to create what's called a superimposer object. And what the superimposer object requires are the actual atoms that we want to compare. So we will create a list of reference atoms and moving atoms. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and go through all of those duos. We'll just rename these. And now first we want to make sure that uh, both duos are there. So in, in cases of gaps, for example, um, it, you know, it, it, if, you, if you have a gap in the alignment where you only have one amino acid, not the other, you, don't, you wanna continue on. And then we are just appending all of the atoms that we want to compare. So I am here, I'm just using the alpha carbon. So right now I'm saying compare the alpha carbon from residue one and the alpha carbon from residue two, and that's what you're trying to get as close as possible. Um, but you can actually use multiple um, atoms. You can use more than one, and so that's part of the exercises is to actually be able to do that. So now we have this rough atoms and the moving atoms. So this is a list of atoms from structure one and from structure two. Um, so you'll notice that the parent of the reference atoms is chain A, the parent of the moving atoms is chain B. So all of these atoms are from A and all these atoms are from chain B. So now we take the superimposer object and now we just set the atoms that we want to use. So it says these are the reference atoms and then these are the moving atoms. So this is what is used in order to create um, essentially a small translational rotational matrix in order to say, okay, if I want to align one structure to another, I take all of these atoms and then I move it in this way. So we run that. And then now we just apply that to the structure uh, that we want. And so, uh, sorry, this should be structure two. And now we have moved it. And so now we will simply save. Ah. And then, sorry, I will correct these typos right after this. And now we have saved this file that we moved. So let's just verify this. So we go to Chimera. We are going to reopen Chimera. So we have chain A. And now we will open this temp file. 
And so we see that we have moved this B file so that it's aligned um, in the new position. All right, so this is, I know it's complicated. You're probably gonna have to go through this a little bit, um, but it's actually really good to understand how this whole process works. And if you follow this process, you should be able to pretty straightforwardly um, align two proteins together.